Welcome to China Horse Business, the one and only podcast focusing on the booming horse market in China. Bringing to you by two experts of Chinese equine industry, Zoe King and Jojo Wang from Shanghai and Hong Kong, introducing China to the world. Hi, Jojo. How are you doing? Hi, Zoe. I'm doing good. I just stay late at night sometimes to support my favorite team for the UEFA European Championship. Sam here. So, what's your favorite team? My heart goes to the Great Britain, and you? Oh, I'm a big fan of French team, and my favorite player is Antoine Griezmann. Do you know he's also a horse owner in France? Oh, really? What kind of horse he has? Well, he has a trotter and a thoroughbred for racing. As a matter of fact, many football players in France are also horse owners. Interesting. I think they just want to extend their excitement for the game and the speed from the football field to the racing track. Are they? That makes sense.、Uh, speaking of big competitions, Tokyo 2020 is around the corner. It is confirmed to be held from July 23 to August 8 this year. In today's China news section, let's catch up with the latest update of China Equestrian Team. For sure, you know China Team has already passed the MER test in 2019 in Europe and secured their tickets for team competition in eventing and jumping. But due to the postponement of the Olympics, they have to pass the MER again this year. But most of the Chinese rider were in China during the pandemic. That makes them separate from their horse in Europe and for more than a year. The return to Europe for training was very difficult due to the travel restriction. As soon as they get back to Europe in April, they started the training with their horses and coaches. Fortunately, China team once again passed the MER and secured their tickets for Tokyo again. Yes, for the team eventing, we have four qualified riders: Alex Huatian, Sun Huadong, Bao Yingfeng, and Liang Ruiji. And for team jumping, we also have four riders: Li Zhenqiang and his son Li Yaofeng, Zhang Xinjia, Zhang Yao. This is definitely a breakthrough for China equestrian competition because it's the first time we participate in two disciplines as a team. Let's wish the best for their journey in Tokyo. Following this great news, we want to introduce the Helen International Equestrian Club in today's China Club section. Because two of the eventing riders, Sun Huadong and Bao Yingfeng, are from this club, and Jojo and I, we both visit there on many occasions. Yes, let's dig into a little bit of historical background. Hainan International Equestrian Club's mother company is Hainan Group, which is originally a textile manufacturer. Found Hainan Group later transformed itself into a holding group, investing in many sectors when the equestrian industry entered into Hainan business scope as a strategic measure of corporation transformation. The group decided to set up the Hainan International Equestrian Club. In a luxury tourist town in Jiangyin City, one and a half hour driving distance from Shanghai, the facilities of the club are world class level. However, because of the long distance from the main cities, they are more focusing on individual horse owners and professional training. That's also why it's training center of Jiangsu team since 2014. The Highland International Equestrian Club is also known by their horse show and horse museum. The horse show is performed by 56 female riders and trained by Spanish coach. As for the museum, there are 43 breeds of horses from different countries. These horses live in their proper stables. But display in marble pens to greet visitors during visiting hour. Last but not least, there is a well-equipped equine clinic providing vet services not only to over three hundred horses in Helen, but those from the rest of China. On this note, we have invited Amber Coyman for China Story Session. She is from Netherlands and she has been coaching in Helen for three and a half years. Amber is also close friend to Sun Huadong and Bao Yingfeng. Let's listen to her China story. Hello, Amber. How are you doing? 
I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm、uh, interviewing you with Jojo Wang today from Hong Kong. Yes. Hello, Amber. Hi. Nice to meet you. Amber,、uh, we know that you have been in China for three and a half years. I wonder what brought you to China in the first place. Well, that's actually a funny story because、um, I was working in the Netherlands as a, a freelance trainer, and I remember.、Um, Driving in my car one night, and my friend、uh, called me. My friend was at the time working for Martin Lips,、mm-hmm. so they were apparently、um, looking for trainers to come to China to Hailan. So the minute I actually heard China, I said, "Well, then you can hang up the phone because I'm not gonna leave the Netherlands and go to China." <laughs> and they actually convinced me to come here for one month to try. And then after being here for two weeks, I never wanted to go home anymore. So <laughs> that's kind of the story. Usually,、um, I try like every three or four months to go、uh, to go back back Holland back to Holland.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, now, because of the pandemic, of course, the last time I visited Holland was December two thousand nineteen. So Amber, you work for、yeah. Helen. How would you describe Helen? Is it、um, a question club, a training club, or there's more? Well, it's like、um, how I said, how I see it. Like the first time I came here, I was amazed, and it it's like a place that even when you send people pictures or videos of it, and you see it in real life, you still cannot really believe it. How it started, actually, like.、Uh, Around ten, twelve years ago, it started because the the owner of Hailan actually got interested in horses more as a as a hobby. So he wanted to build the the stables mainly that time for the for the show. Every Saturday night, there is an、uh, an equestrian show in a, a riding arena that's actually looking similar, but then even more pretty than the than the arena in Vienna. You know, with the with the Spanish horses. Yes. And then、um, because the the main business of Hailan is the the clothing. They make、uh, clothing and、um, home furniture, and they have shops th- and factories throughout China. So they started building、uh, the stables and the show arena, and then shopping malls around it. Then also. There's、um, hotels around it on the property,、yeah. so that people, when they want to come visit Thailand, you know, you can have like a, really a weekend of things to see. It's not not just the horses. There's、um, a museum, like a equestrian museum,、uh, because many people in China, and especially I think people who visit as a tourist, we have the the dressage team. Who are、uh, qualified to go to the China Games this year in September, and then we also have the now the eventing team who's qualified for the China Games, and two riders out of that are qualified for the for the Olympics. So it's kind of a bit of everything actually. So after three point five years working in China now, Ember, what is the major difference you think in coaching between China and your country? Well, mainly, and I think in the beginning that was the biggest issue for me, is of course the language. I didn't speak a word of Chinese. Yeah. So and it go your instructions get like、um, delayed because well you tell them for example after the corner, start shoulder in, but then the girl first has to translate it for you. So if you want to have like fine tuning or work on details in the beginning, that was for me very difficult because there's always a delay because of the cultural difference. Dutch people, we we are very、um, very straightforward. Maybe、mm-hmm. sometimes a little bit too straightforward even. <laughs> When something negative has to be said about an exercise, to my Dutch student or my Dutch trainer in Holland can say, "Well, hey, that was really not good, you know." And mm-hmm. here, if you、mm-hmm. would bring it like that, maybe people would get like、uh, a little bit offended by that, or they feel personally 
a sex and okay. then you have to bring it like a little bit in a more friendly uh friendly way <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and what so, you say, yes, what yes. you say now, Amber, when you the the writer is not is not good, is <laughs> not writing correctly. What you say? Well, now I I and I actually think it's also a learning process for myself because I actually think that's a good thing. Right now, if an exercise, for example, goes wrong, I try to start by saying, okay, well, um, you did this and that, you did good, but. Next time we do this, I try to work on this and that so that you like always first tell them the positive thing about what they did and then tell them what can be better next time. So not what was like literally wrong, but what can be better. And I so. think also what, what makes it different is like I grew up on a farm and with horses from a very young age. Like when I started to walk, my mm -hmm. grandpa bought my first pony, you know, and the guys and the girls that ride here and i think mainly in china because or huh, more wealthy people from the city ride or here the people that ride ride for their job but they all start riding at a at an older age mm -hmm. so i also think like the the horsemanship is, is, is different we started mostly for passion and they started sometimes mostly for work issues or i think the, uh, the environment is here here very different yeah. by you working and actively competing in china with your team and your your students what are the new trends happening in china equestrian industry from your perspective well i think if i look at the last three years i think the amount of teams like teams riding at competition and the amount of clubs throughout china are like growing immensely i also think that that a lot of clubs are now eh, investing more um money in in knowledge and in horses so you see much more european coaches coming in and and uh, European horses, a lot of Dutch horses, a lot of German horses as well. So mm -hmm. I think what I see mostly is that the sport is really growing and starting to get a much more professional uh, feeling about it. Thank you. Thank you, Amber, for your sharing. It's really helpful. Yeah, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank yeah. you, so, Amber. Yeah. Well, let's hope next time when we visit uh, Helen, we can make up with you. Do you have great coffee yeah, that, in Helen? Yes, we, ha we have good coffee. <laughs> and we have, of course, the Hailan the coffee shops. We will meet there. Oh, yeah. It's a date. Yeah, that would be great. Well, I can't wait to see the equestrian competition in Tokyo in only three weeks ahead. It's too bad that no public will be allowed to assist the competition due to the COVID. But I will definitely follow it on the TV or my phone. For sure. And well done for your first episode, Jojo. I will talk to you next week and take care. Thank you, Zoe. See you next week. This podcast is co-hosting by Zoe King and Jojo Wong, powered by Wonder Horse, a business solution provider focusing on Chinese equine market and a bespoke equine community in China. In addition to this weekly podcast, we launch a monthly webinar called China Horse Business Life. The objective is to connect in international industrial stakeholders with Chinese decision makers and professionals in the industry. Four to five speakers will introduce their activities, products, surveys, and any other topic relating to the equine industry within 10 minutes in English. This webinar is open to all Chinese audience, especially targeting equestrian club owners, professionals, riders, officials, and suppliers. This is a perfect opportunity for you to introduce your brand, products, and services to real Chinese audience and interact with them. You may find your partner, distributor, or clients in these webinars. If you're interested in making a speech in the webinar, please subscribe to our annual package, Business Pass, which will allow you to speak once per semester in the webinar, along with many other premium benefits. A lower cost annual package, Connect Pass, is also available with some useful benefits. Please check them out on our website, www.wonder-horse.com.
podcast and in the show note of this podcast. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can subscribe it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any podcast channel by searching the name of our program, China Horse Business. We are also looking forward to meeting you in China Horse Business Live, a monthly webinar connecting the international equine community with China. Please feel free to leave us comment and recommend our program to your friends and coworkers. Spare the word and stay tuned.